1991, everybody had fun, following their hearts, but the music on the charts was often intolerably dumb. News flash people, the top 10 this week sucks. See if you agree as we go back to the week ending 10th of March 1991. Oh, this is going to be a quick one. In at number 10 is the legend that is Dimples D on his way to number 1 with his masterwork which is Sucker DJ. This record is the kind of novelty party rap that I can't stand and I think degrades the form. I may even go so far as to say that Dimples D is the least gifted rapper I have ever heard. Zero discernible skills or charm, again this made number 1 for 2 weeks. In at 9, another hit and out, Stevie B with the Postman song. It must be said that Stevie B is no Stevie Wonder, no Stevie Ray Vaughan and no Stevie Nicks. If anything, he is a bargain basement Prince knockoff with dubious pitching. Somehow this guy has managed a career beyond the song, but thankfully no evidence of that has ever been evinced on these shores. The last time he was ever in the news was when he was arrested after a concert for owing almost half a million dollars in unpaid child support. 8 is Sadness by Enigma, a more appropriately named record there never has been. More dull, pointless rubbish that barely qualifies as music. Does anybody like this? I'd be curious to have its merits pointed out. It spent 15 weeks on the chart, which is the same as American Pie, more than crying in the chapel, I fell to pieces and all I need is a miracle by Mike and the Mechanics. There is no justice. At number 7, hooray, finally a decent record. I touch myself by one of the great Australian groups of the 80s, The Divinals. A lascivious and irresistible hit. This song peaked at number 1 for the first two weeks of February and made number 4 in the US despite some fairly rigorous objections. Still had a few good hits left in them. Love School, which was on the charts as I touch myself, ended its 23 week spell. And The Rock and I Ain't Gonna Eat Out My Heart Anymore. Music fans throughout the country were stunned into silent sadness when Chrissy Amphlett, the dynamic and charismatic singer of the band, Queen of Pop, or its then equivalent for 1982, and a valued mentor for anyone coming up in the industry, died from breast cancer complicated by multiple sclerosis in, nine, in 2013. A laneway in Melbourne was immediately named in her honour and a plaque and artworks put in place. <sighs> Back to inane twaddle. It's fantasy by those Italian house musicians, and I use that term loosely, Black Box at number 6, combining an elevator music organ part with a high, dry, screechy, over-emoting woman's voice and an annoying huh! sample. It spent 8 weeks in the top 10 for a peak of 3, bothering the charts for an astonishing 19 weeks. They actually managed four top 20 hits, but their career ended in ignominy when it was discovered that the French model they hired as a front person for the band was in fact lip syncing in live performances. What do you expect when you hire a French model as your front woman? Mon Dieu peut importer la suite. At 5 is the biggest selling Australian record of the year with 6 months on the charts and 2 weeks on top in May. And no one I know, self included, remembers them in the slightest. Ratcat were allegedly the first Australian indie band to go mainstream. They played a by the numbers kind of skate punk garbage kid in his bedroom with a Tascam kind of rock. They had one more top 20 single, the number one Don't Go Now, and apart from an underwear ad, it was about all they deserve. I'm sorry I'm so grumpy. These are usually fun, but this is just depressing. Anyway, it's time for hello and goodbye, where we salute the top tens fallen and fawn over the bright young things that have taken their place. Fresh faces this week are Dimples D, who vaulted 23 places to number 10. Stevie B trebucheted himself into the top 10, moving from 17 to 9, and Sadness sadly climbed from 14 to 8. Departing the 10 this week is the mighty Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice, who after killing our minds like a poisoned mushroom, is down from 8 to 11. Accompanying him on the road to Oblivion is the Scottish band The Soup Dragons and their absolutely wretched cover of The Rolling Stones' As I'm Free. It is positively one of the worst things I've ever heard. Christ, Brian Jones died so clowns like this could cover his band? I have no clue. I give up. 
The other lever is Robert Palmer's cover of Bob Dylan's I'll Be Your Baby Tonight, which dropped from 10 to 23, no doubt hoping to escape the avalanche of excrement descending on the top 10 this week. The next number one record this week's charts is a rare example of having five future, current or past number one hits on it, is one of the worst number ones ever. Not quite drum and bad, but very, very bad nonetheless. The Simpsons with Do the Bart Man. And we will never talk of it again until we come to this week's number two. In everybody's new favourite section, the trade-up, the best, most interesting records on the charts which never made the top ten were The Obvious Standout, The Wonderful Miss Free Love 69 by The Hoodoo Gurus, a terrific, marvellous band who to date have only ever had four singles hit the top 20 in Australia, which is frankly criminal. It was number 41 this week, up from 43 to a peak of 19. The only other real standout is the Hothouse Flowers warm cover of I Can See Clearly Now, which only struggled up the charts to number 22. There just wasn't much substantial on the chart this week. Number four. Number four is more rattle, clap, annoying anti-music in Gonna Make You Sweat by the CNC Music Factory. Ordinarily, there's no greater defender of inane dance and pop music than yours truly, but by Jingo, a trap sort of draw the line somewhere. This is a musical plate of spaghetti that's been dumped on the floor. They managed four top 20 singles. This which made number three is the biggest. The band broke up when David Coles, one of the C's, died in 1996 of meningitis, which was a, they reformed apparently in 2010. Who knew? Get any worse, it got worse. Wiggle It by Two in a Room is a lazy, tuneless, lifeless, Pointless and oh god, it's so awful. I'm gonna stop now and go and listen to some Stevie Wonder. Seriously, this shit is whack. As mentioned before, Do the Bart Man by The Simpsons was number two. What was wrong with us back then? What was wrong with Michael Jackson, who co wrote, co produced, and sang on this river? Quiet up the back, we all know what you think was wrong with Michael Jackson, but nothing was proven in a court of law, okay? This was the first single ever in Australia to make number one and not be released on a vinyl disc. So, here we go, let's get this musically dank and dismal world into a world of facts, where with the help of said facts, you can reject the chart's reality and substitute your own. It's Fowl's fantastic world of facts. As mentioned, the big jumper this week is Dimples D, who is up a phenomenal 23 places from 33 to 10. Do the Bartman was a one-week impediment between it and number one them, where it spent a fortnight before falling to Julie Cruz, which wasn't even on the charts this week. The theme song to Twin Peaks just showed us how easily swayed we were then by cross-media contamination on the charts. The biggest fall of this week was Scatterbrain with the incomprehensible Don't Call Me Dude, which equally incomprehensibly made number 14, but fell this week from 30 to 47. The highest debutante this week was the legends from Newcastle, New South Wales, the Screaming Jets with Better. When they first came out of Newcastle, their gigs had a reputation for fantastic violence, and by the time they took the highway south to Sydney, it escalated massively, bloodily with the home turf defenders. But gradually they got to the point, the band that is, when they had five top 20 albums and two singles. Better was the biggest, making number four. And they still tour with package tours quite regularly, where they still give a great show. Singer Dave Gleason has a cool side hustle too, as lead singer of The Angels, the band that I've probably seen in concert more times than any other act. Is either former number one Unchained Melody, Poodle Rock Anthem Cherry Pie, or Candy by Iggy Pop, each with 19 weeks. In the USA, the number one single was Someday by Mariah Carey. I started out ambivalent about Carey, filing her under Great Voice Can't Sing category. Since then I've become less enthusiastic in my assessment, especially given the endless raft of soulless talent show knockoffs that learned all her tricks but don't have the intelligence to make sense of a song. Ah well. In number one, the number one record was The Clash, who Should I Stay or Should I Go was a two week topper. This for some reason fills me with inchoate rage. A year ago, a number one in the old hometown was the far more sensible Nothing Compares to You by Sinead O'Connor, 
and a year from now it will be awful but less awful than 90% of this chart, Salt Water by Julian Lennon. Lennon came out to Australia and was booked to perform the song in the Rotunda in our city mall. The crowd was underwhelming. I walked right by him as I made my way back from lunch. Had no idea who he was or why he was there. And the number one album in town this week was The Hot House Flowers with Home, who this week knocked off Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation from the upper room after a four week tenancy. I think we've pulled this one out of the fire, people, because the drummer's booth is the hominid who is not timid, our very own Monty the Safety Monkey. At number one this week is another one of those faceless dance acts that proliferate across the charts this week, London Beat, who were curiously from Holland. It's not the worst record ever, but it's far from the best. And from my memory, and 1991 radio is not my strong point, it absolutely saturated the airways for its four weeks at number one and the 17 weeks it spent all up on the charts. Using my new secret super algorithm, this is the equal second highest rated song that spent 17 weeks on the chart, tied with I Feel Fine by The Beatles and Behind Physical by Olivia Newton-John. I'm sorry, but that was so terrible and it filled me with disappointment that there just wasn't anything apart from the Divinals that was even remotely interesting or good. The charts went on pretty much like this until the end of the year. Things bucked up a little as house music ran out of steam and new jack swings started to come into its own, but not by that much. But it was almost a year before Joy of Joys. The charts began to fill with crummy little grunge bands. But that's the way it was. That's where the chips fell and that's how the cow ate the cabbage. And if the good lords are willing and the creeks don't rise, I'll be back with a new instalment next week. Ish. <laughs>